How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Moustache with some new tips in order to help you creating your own green area indoor or outdoor following the principle of do as nature does. It's January and even though it's a cold month it's time to start planning ahead in preparation for the new season. Most people get to the beginning of the season and start randomly sowing seeds in the hope that at the end of the season they will harvest some food. Also there are many different kinds of seeds that seems to create a lot of confusion without a proper guide. So dig up that like button and today I will teach you how to make a plan in preparation for the next season but also I will explain the differences between all the different kind of seeds. The first thing to consider when planning what to plant in your garden is the space that you have available. For example, in a space like my urban garden, I wouldn't plant anything that grows too tall or takes up too much space, but I would select varieties that grows relatively small so I can fit as many different varieties as possible in a small area. The first thing that you would do is to go on Google Maps and look at your garden from above so you can see the shape, that in most case scenario, it's an irregular shape. If you're lucky enough to have a drone, you could also fly above the garden to have an idea of the space that you have available and also the exact shape and how to draw it. Take some measurements of your beds or raised beds and draw them in the allocated spaces following the image from Google Maps. Keep an eye on the sun rotation over your garden for a day or two, just to have an idea of the areas that are more exposed or less exposed to the sunlight. Make sure to consider some margin of error because the more that we get into spring and summer, the coverage of the sunlight changes slightly. Once you have your plan on paper, it is time to decide where and what to plant in your garden. You can either create an Excel spreadsheet from scratch or you can go online and look for a template. The dates for sowing your seeds might change every single year, however it's good to have a reference time. This is a simple and easy spreadsheet that you can make at home and it's a great way to get organized but also to understand what to plant, when to plant it and where to plant it in your garden. I usually start seeds indoor four to six weeks before the last wave of frost. Seed starting time are calculated by taking the date of the last frost and subtracting the days until the transplant. However, the seed packet will normally tell you how many weeks. Be careful to not get too excited and start seeding door too early and being submerged by plants in need of transplant without having enough space. When it comes to decide what to plant into the garden, there are two main factors to take into consideration. The first thing to understand is how much you and your family will eat the vegetable throughout the year. Keep in mind that plants like tomatoes, squash, pepper and aubergines keep producing throughout the season. This step will help you to avoid wasting time and garden space just because something looks cool or nice from the picture in the seed packet. This could be to save money, so I would highly recommend to go to your local supermarket and check for the most expensive vegetable that you could grow based on your climate and start growing those. If it's just to eat organic food, try to grow something low maintenance and almost pest free like garlic, onion or herbs. Alternatively, if it's to feed your family, plant something that is highly productive like courgettes, tomatoes, aubergines, or peppers. In any case, make sure to check what grows best in your area, but also do a few experiments. It is now the perfect time to start stocking up the seeds that you decided to grow in your garden. However, it could be really confusing with all these names involved and all these different varieties that you find on the market. It doesn't matter what kind of seeds you're looking for, it's crucial that you choose healthy seeds to get the most benefits. We can divide seeds in four main categories, which are called GMO, hybrid, heirloom or organic seeds. Genes that have been changed by humans are also known as genetically modified organisms. They can surely have great short time impact, however in the long term the effects are questionable. Many issues remain unanswered, including the possibility to contaminate non-GMO crops with GMO crops. Non-GMO crops could be contaminated by a variety of things, including wind, insects, or even inappropriate handling. However, if you're wondering if you could buy GMO seeds, they're not for sale for the home gardeners. When one plant variety is crossed with another, 
This is how you get a new hybrid. In cross-pollination, pollen from a male flower of one of the plants is used to cross-pollinate another female flower from another plant. After the pollination, the female ovaries start to swollen until a new fruit is produced. When this fruit is fully mature, it develops seeds and those seeds will be hybrid seeds. I experimented this process with chilies, creating many hybrid varieties and collecting up to 400 varieties of cross-pollinated chilies. It takes up to six, seven generations, depending on the plant, to get a stable hybrid variety. When it comes to hybrid seeds, they are referred to as F1, rather than calling them open pollinated. Generally speaking, hybrid seeds are more reliable than open pollinated varieties. Another variety of seeds that you can find, it's organic seeds, like this amaranth plant that is hanging upside down, waiting for the seeds to dry until they're ready to harvest and to be stored for the next season. Many people are looking to buy organic seeds over conventional seeds, but if you ask them for the reason why, there is a lot of confusion that needs to be explained. The term organic denotes something that was once living, but also is meeting specific guidelines. We refer to the term organic seeds when a product is not treated with any sort of chemical throughout the growing process. However, this is not entirely true, as they could be exposed to organic pesticides, which could be dangerous. Because of their lower efficiency compared to chemicals, they could be used at a higher concentration. I'm not saying that organic seeds are bad or not good to be used, as they are actually one of my favorite choices, but it's good to clarify this common misconception. The last variety are heirloom seed, which are seeds that are worth passing down. An heirloom seed is a seed that has been passed on from one generation to another, carefully selected and conserved because it's considered valuable. It could be valuable for many different reasons, including productivity, flavor, or also for the hardiness in cold climate. Many heirloom varieties have been grown, saved, and conserved for over a hundred years, but there are some varieties in history that are considered saved over 300 years. Heirloom seeds are one of my favorite varieties to conserve and to plant in my garden. And over the years, I collected many different varieties and it's kind of addictive to adapt to your collection. I highly recommend UF Seeds for the quality of seeds, but also for the great varieties that they have on their website. And you can find the link in the description if you would like to buy your own. I hope you liked today's video and if so, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next week for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.